strap yourself in. I think this is going to be a pretty long vlog. It's Sunday and I'm literally about to sit down and start editing this vlog. So this is me coming to you at the end of all of the footage that you're about to see. This is going to be four weeks worth of just stuff. So it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big catch up. It's going to start all the way back on the 9th of March when I went to Paris with Vestia Collective and then go right up to present day because I am so behind with vlog stuff at the moment that I just need to get it all out so that I'm fully up to date and I feel like I can kind of start afresh and get back to being in a up-to-date pattern with vlogging. So for all the long vlog fans, you're going to enjoy this one. Um, yeah, grab yourself a drink, even potentially maybe something to eat and sit back, relax and enjoy. Hold on, hold on, sorry, before I allow you to enjoy this vlog, I forgot one vital piece of information in that introduction. Actually, I'm going to put you up on the tripod. That is all set up, ready to go, perfect. <laughs> and that is just to let you know that this week's vlog is sponsored by Shana Mo, a brand that I think a fair amount of you will be familiar with. I have featured a few of her pieces in the past. I think maybe more so those of you based in the US will be more familiar with the brand. Shana Mo is a brand that I would describe as deliberately simple and I mean that in the best way possible because everything is designed with a lot of intention and there's so much beauty within the simplicity of their pieces and I really appreciate that and what I appreciate as well about the brand is how transparent, how informative they are about the brand's ethos. I'll link their ethos page in the description box because it's really refreshing to see a brand go into so much depth about everything from like the circularity to um, where things are made, you know, are people getting paid fairly, uh, where are fabrics coming from, all that information that you really want from a brand that isn't really touched on in that much depth. So it's really incredible to see that. So as part of this week's sponsorship, I'll be featuring some of Shana Moat's pieces within my outfits and I can offer you a 15% off discount code, which I'll pop here. I'll also put it in the description box along with all the links to the pieces that I feature. Um, yeah, it's just such a, like the, the Shana Moat universe is so beautiful. Like all of the imagery is really, really stunning. Um, as are the pieces, obviously. And I think what the brand has created is just something really quite stunning and special. Anyway, without further ado, I will allow you to enjoy this week's big bumper vlog. Hello, hello. I'm in Paris. Not that you'd be able to tell from the backdrop because I'm just in my hotel. I've got no idea if I'm in frame either. Hopefully I am in the frame somewhere. Yeah, I'm in Paris for the next two nights um, because tomorrow I am going on a very, 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 very special tour of the Vestia Collective Warehouse, um, which I cannot wait for. I've been a customer of Vestia Collective for years um, and I've been working with them in a paid capacity over on Instagram for like the past year. So I, as I've seen the platform grow and I and I've started to use it more and more, I've become more intrigued as to how the behind the scenes work. And I'm gonna get to see all of that tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to document some of it for you. I have been told there's quite like strict rules as to what I can and can't film, um, just for kind of like, I guess, safety reasons, security, like legal reasons. Um, staff safety you know all that kind of stuff but hopefully i'll be able to show you some some things so yeah i um oh that reminds me just popped into my head i'm going to leave my vestiaire wish list or like favorites list in the description box because i i'd say i browse vestiaire collective at least once a week and i'm constantly adding things to my favorites list so i'll put that below so you can also have a browse of just things that i've kind of like got my eye on or just things that i love like i don't even necessarily add things because i want to buy them like there's things on there that aren't my size like there's shoes that aren't my size because I'm just it's just nice to favorite things and have them as a reference because it's also a, quite a good inspiration tool um I do use Vestiaire a lot for my row pieces I'd say about 70% of the row pieces I have came through Vestiaire Collective including my bindle my beloved bindle um and I have started using Vestiaire a lot more to browse vintage um and try and find more unique pieces at the moment I'm on the hunt for a nice cropped velvet jacket. I've got my eye on a, a, quite an old Celine one. Like not old Celine as in Phoebe Philo Celine, as in like really, really old, old Celine. And a Dior one, um, which you can see if you click on my, on my favorites thing. So yeah, what else was I gonna say? So yeah, tonight, 
going out for dinner, tomorrow is the warehouse tour, and then on Saturday, so today's Thursday, Friday warehouse tour, Saturday I have a Eurostar booked home for 3 p.m. So I've got a nice chunk of the morning free. So I think I'm gonna do some vintage shopping. I wanna see, I wanna go check out pre-clothes, which I've you, I've shot them online, so I, I really wanna see them in real life. And another one called M Archives. Both of them I'm like obsessed with everything they upload, so I really wanna see them in real life. And then I'll probably find somewhere to go for a coffee. I'm staying at the Hoxton, so I need to figure out like what's in this area. There's something about Paris, like I haven't really been to, I put, could probably count on both hands the amount of times I've been to Paris. And every time I come here, I can't get my bearings. I just can't get a sense of like, what is in what direction, where I am in relation to everything else. So I need to go on Google Maps and just see like what's around me, what I've got starred in this area. If I've got time, I'd also really like to go and check out the Le Mer store. Cause it's always such like a, a feast for the eyes, the Le Mer store. And they often have quite cool like installations in that like little side room that they have. Um, so yes. I have about 45 minutes now to get ready for a little beverage downstairs. I'm all like warm and cozy, so I'm, this is why I'm procrastinating and just like waffling on to you guys. Oh, I've been loaned a bag. Bestia have loaned me a handbag for the evening. Check this out. I, I think, is this the Lady Dior Lady? Lady Dior? I don't, I don't really know my Dior handbag, so I don't know the names of them. But I'm quite glad that this was here in my room because I was thinking on the Euro side, I'd not really brought myself, a, I'd not packed a nice bag for this evening's outfit. And I think this will go quite well with what I'm wearing this evening. Um, so I will enjoy this for the evening and then I'll give it back to Vestia Collective tomorrow. But I'm gonna make a cup of tea and get myself ready. Yeah, Wednesday Adams. I know, I know, but I think Wednesday Adams in the best possible way. Uh, shirt with this rather elongated collar is La Mer. A uh, couple of years old, but La Mer rarely changed the, their collar shape. Um, it's kind of in a sort of like beigey colour. So I'm not sure if this colour is still available, but this style of shirt, it's their classic twist shirt, is always in their core collection. Uh, jacket is vintage Armani. This light is not going to do it justice at all. It's such a beautiful jacket and it's such a nice fit. Um, really nice one for the evening, I think. Um, I'm not very good at dressing for the evening, so this instantly makes me feel a lot smarter. Um, Margaret Howe belt. To create a sort of like high-low contrast, I've gone for jeans, weekday rail jeans, and then Maison Margiela tabbies, and then the lady. I feel very, um, I guess, very, very fancy. I don't normally wear a jacket with such a sharp, sharp shoulder. Um, and I'm normally, you know, drowning in something oversized, but trying to embrace more fitted silhouettes. Um, and I really like this. I just, yeah, I, I feel really good in it. Oh, and I put a little necklace on. So this is like a beaded necklace with a shell clasp on it, um, just to kind of like add a little something. Cause I've not got any earrings in, cause I feel like the collar does enough, but I just felt like I needed a bit more. So I just put that little necklace there. So it almost looks like a little sort of like button. Right, off for a drink. Good morning, it's 7.15. I woke up at 6.15, hence the very puffy, tired looking face. So I'm trying one-handedly to try and get my hotel car back in its thing. That's not happening. Um, yeah, early start this morning because the train strikes are still on here in Paris. So um, there's a lot of cancellations and we've got to get a train from Garden Moor out to Lille. And this is like the only train we can get basically, um, which is fine. It just means we have more time to have fun at the warehouse. I'm gonna voice over this part because my video footage is a bit chaotic because it was quite an express tour and it doesn't really make sense without the voiceover. So the tour started with a video of just an overview of the things that they authenticate on a regular basis and the ways in which they authenticate different things from like handbags, shoes, jewelry, watches. And then this, the process starts with obviously the item being sold on the platform and then it gets shipped to Vestia Collective. It arrives in the box and then it's unpackaged and it goes straight over to authentication. That is the first step. So this is Grace here and 
She is an authenticator. It was really interesting listening to her talk about her role. She, I believe she said she's been an authenticator for two years. And within that two years, she is constantly learning new things um, and always going through training. Luckily, this Louis Vuitton bag was authentic and it was in pretty much mint condition. So she didn't have too much to say about it, but she did talk us through some of the things she would look out for when authenticating a bag like this. So once Grace gives it the green light, she literally does press like a green tick on the Vestiaire platform to say, yes, this is authentic. It goes over to quality control to double check that it matches the description that it was given on the Vestiaire website. If it needs repairing, it would get repaired at this stage. It gets cleaned if it needs cleaning at this stage. Yeah, it's just an overall check to to make sure it is in the correct condition. And then once it passes quality control, it simply gets repackaged and then popped in a box, put on this conveyor belt and then sent off to the buyer. In the afternoon, we were then given an authenticating masterclass to see if we ourselves could authenticate pieces that have been delivered to Vestia Collective. So they passed around some things like scarves and jewellery, but most excitingly, some Hermes bags. And we were given tools to see if we could authenticate these pieces ourselves. On the side, you could see that there is a letter here. Can you see it? Right, I apologise if the quality of this is shockingly terrible. I'm using my iPhone and as we all know, iPhone does not perform well in low light. As you can see, I'm back in my hotel room and there is a platter of food waiting to be eaten, but I just thought I'd quickly do an update while I've still got the energy. Um, today was really cool. I loved seeing the process of like, from start to finish, you know, like uh, the item arriving in the warehouse and going through its different stages right up until when it gets packaged um, and sent off to its buyer. Um, we focused, the tour kind of went through all the different stages, but we focused a lot on the authentication process, which was really interesting. Grace, the woman that we were chatting to, she used that Louis Vuitton handbag as an example to show how she authenticates an item. I know I've kind of narrated over the clips, but I'll just kind of give a little bit more context. Um, yeah, just super interesting. She was talking about like how much training she has to go through to make sure that she is always kind of like on the ball and like on top of her game and always making sure that she is spotting the counterfeits. Because as you can imagine, with a massive platform like Vestiaire, counterfeits do get sent to them, whether they're, it's been done intentionally or whether it's like someone might not even know that the item that they're trying to sell is counterfeit. You know, it might be passed down, they might have bought it from someone else, you know, you never know. Um, so they, especially, you know, I imagine that is quite popular in, in terms of like handbags, jewelry and shoes. So they really have to be on it with making sure that every item is checked thoroughly. Um, so there's a lot of training she said that goes into that position and she's constantly kind of like being trained continuously because of like new styles and um, new leathers and new stitching and like different, you know, like for example, the Chanel handbag was made differently 50 years ago as to how it is now. So you need to kind of like know how the bags were made like in each year and stuff. It's like, there's so much that they have to learn. And um, as a result, like she was just so knowledgeable about like, what to look out for in terms of like vintage bags and like bags that were made recently and just, yeah, like an absolute fountain of knowledge and really, really interesting. Um, and then in the afternoon, they kind of like put us to the test and tried to teach us like things to look out for and used some scarves and some handbags and some jewelry as examples. And then we had to kind of like, we were all given an item and we had to kind of like use our little like, the eye thing, I can't remember what that was called, and like tape measure and stuff, and try and figure out if our item that was in front of us was counterfeit or real. Um, it was really fun. Um, what I actually really love, this is gonna sound lame, I've never like, I've never ever touched an Hermes handbag. I've seen people wearing them, um, but I've never really seen one up close and personal. I've never like held one or anything. And she, the woman had this, uh, Kelly and I can't remember what the actual leather was called that was used it's um, some incredibly beautiful leather um, and like the feel of it 
it's like no other handbag I've ever touched and the smell and just everything like the just the stitching all the detail the craftsmanship I was like mind blown like um so I was very much like oh this is a real Kelly and it's in my hands I had gloves on of course um so that was cool um yeah just a really great day um just seeing a little peek behind not like a full peek because there were things we couldn't see but just a little peek behind the whole process the very well oiled machine and i was very impressed with how tidy and organized the warehouse was not that i didn't expect it to be but you know i was like oh wow this is very very nice space um so i am now gonna eat my dinner it's like half seven and i'm really tired so i'm gonna eat this dinner go into a food coma, watch something on the TV, and then tomorrow, change of plan. So I said I was going to go vintage shopping, but I've looked at the addresses of the two places I want to go to, and they're like in opposite directions, and neither of them are even really in a close proximity to where I am now. Um, so I actually think I'm going to have a museum or a gallery morning because the weather's meant to be rubbish. I don't have an umbrella. I don't particularly want to be traipsing around Paris in the rain. So I think it's a perfect excuse to just hide in a museum and then I'll get some lunch and then I'll get the Eurostar but until then I'm just gonna be here on the bed I decided to go to at least one of the vintage shops this morning before I go to a museum. Um, so I'm just getting a hair off my screen. So um, first thing I'm trying on is this blazer. It is absolutely swamping me. It looks too much like that Frankie shop one, but I just wanted to try it on because it feels beautiful. It's like this really heavy weight. It almost feels like a boiled wool. It's such a beautiful fabric. Such a shame that I'm not just a bit taller with longer arms. I'm, I mean, I could have the arms taken up, but it's still like it is a massive blazer and I don't think I don't know I'm just not really into the massive massive blazer kind of look I was thinking actually it would look really nice like worn kind of belted with some slouchy trousers and a loafer but when I would wear it that way I don't know probably only if I was going to a dinner or something you know like in an even like as an evening look and to be quite honest I don't really go out for dinner that very often so this is a no but it's 150 euros and it's just absolutely stunning so I just felt like I had to try it just in case it worked but yeah as you can see it's it's swamping me next is this kind of like silk I wouldn't really say it's a jacket it's um I'd say it's more of a blouse with a slightly kind of like there's no pad in there um but the way it's cut it kind of makes the shoulder look it's quite structured i think because it's pinned in in the middle i love this the stripe is a sort of very pale green the kind of almost gray i'm getting this this is so beautiful and i think in the summer this with a pair of like white chinos or you know those Margaret Howe trousers I've got, the white pleated ones, that and a pair of like sandals or loafers, I just think this is, yeah, I like this a lot. Do you know what, this isn't actually too bad a look. <laughs> um, and my third and final piece I'm trying on is these Calvin Klein 100% silk trousers, they are stunning. They are a little bit too small in the waist, but I've just been examining the back and I think I, I literally would only need the waist being let out like by half an inch, I reckon. So I'm very tempted by them. They're a very good length, as you can see. They're practically like perfect for me. Um, I think I might get them. I think, I think there's enough fabric in the back there on the seam to just let them out a little bit so beautiful so so beautiful vintage calvin klein um well they look quite good with these loafers. <laughs> look quite good with this blouse actually it feels very sort of like 80s french riviera i'm on holiday kind of you know talented mr ripley um yeah two very good finds like these a lot Oh, and just in case you were wondering what I'm wearing today, not that it's anything exciting, same old chain emote jumper that I always wear. 
Cos belt, nothing written, corduroy trousers. I don't know if you can actually see that they are cord in the mirror. And the row soft loafers with my Peter Petrov coat. Been using the La Mer camera bag again. Got this one back out. Um, yeah. Right, that's my bit of shopping done. that you can buy for 5,800 euros. I mean, it would look very cool in your home. I wasn't going to document this outfit because I thought it was kind of just like unexciting. I'm just having a day of like work meetings pretty much. Um, but then I was like, actually, there's probably a lot of you that work within an environment that doesn't allow you to be like particularly creative with what you wear or inject really any colour and thought this might actually be kind of useful maybe as a little bit of like styling inspiration. Starting from top then all the way down to the bottom, um, totem neck scarf that I'm sure you are all sick of seeing. Like the amount of times I wear this, the cost per wear and the versatility of it is quite impressive I have to say. I've gotten so much wear out of this and just continue to do so through all seasons. Anyway, um, shirt is from Shona Mo. It's just their classic button down linen shirt. It has a, like a little bit of transparency to it. I don't know. You can just about see my bra there, but not hugely. I think you could get away with this within a workspace um, just with like a good nude bra. I think like sometimes with a white shirt and black trousers as a combination especially when within a workspace it, it's hard to make that feel like interesting and it can feel quite meh um I have like I worked in retail for years and it, yeah it, it really kind of got to me how, the lack of like creativity I felt I could have within what I could wear within work um so I feel like playing with like textures and shapes is quite a good way to just make things feel a bit more exciting like as exciting as you can really be within like the boundaries of work really um so I feel like the linen with like the sort of oversized shape of the trousers um feels like more fun and it certainly feels more me I think when I used to work in retail uh, I mean I didn't I couldn't really even incorporate white I could sometimes get away with it but it was head to toe black so the way in which I kind of combated feeling quite uninspired by getting dressed for work every day was just playing with shapes and fabrics as much as I could um to at least feel like I was kind of injecting a bit of me within my work outfits as well anyway that that went off on a bit of a tangent didn't it um Arquette belt Shane and Moat trousers these are the boy trousers in onyx I don't know if you're going to be able to see the fabrication very well just because the lighting's a bit weird they have a double pleat and they're um they're a cotton that is, it still has like a really soft handle to it, but manages to kind of like hold its structure really nicely. I have the winter version of these and they are a lot more heavyweight. They're still comfortable, but they really are quite a structured, stiff pair of trousers. Whereas these, um, 
a, a really nice in between sort of like soft and slouchy and hard and structured if you know what I mean um and they kind of have a slight curve to them just a slight curve and then I'm wearing my tabby flats um obviously if you don't like tabbies as many people don't you could just wear like a normal ballet flat swap these out for a loafer um just most kind of like smart black shoes would work but I um I like the way this sort of dainty ballet flat looks with the big trousers. And then I'll just put on a trench, a beige trench. So it is, it's very, it's a very sort of like classic, you know, look. Sorry, back again. I was just playing around with this sweater vest because it's not quite the temperature to wear it on its own yet as much as I would like to. So I just laid it over this shirt and I thought maybe like if I actually steamed that so it wasn't so creased because it's just been tucked in. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind this. It's like a sort of just, you know, I've got a day, maybe of meetings. Um, just thought that could be like another option for just like a good sort of like work outfit that doesn't really incorporate too many colourful ja jazzy things, you know? <laughs> this is going to be so nice with um, like... Oh, this would be so nice with just like a pair of linen trousers and flip-flops. Hopefully we're not far off that weather. It was at this point that I got struck down by flu and was pretty much stuck on the sofa for an entire week feeling very sorry for myself. At this point in time, like right now, as I talk to you, I'm about three weeks behind with vlog editing. So I've got no idea what I have and haven't vlogged, um, but I've been ill for the past week. So at this stage, there probably would have been a bit of a gap in footage. Um, yeah, I've been stuck on the sofa for about a week feeling absolutely rotten. Yesterday was the first time I managed to get myself out of the house. Um, it's been such nice weather all week and I was like, I need to get out, otherwise I'm gonna regret it. And I did I did feel a lot better for it. So I am feeling like a functioning human finally. Um, but because I've been ill, I haven't been at the house like for the whole week and Dean's been like smashing it. So I'm gonna head there this afternoon and help him. Today's Good Friday, by the way, just to give you some context. So the next few days, um, we're just going to hit it hard, hit it hard over the Easter weekend because all of the tradespeople are done. Like that, that's it. Everyone's done. The plumbers in this morning, getting all the pipes ready for the radiators, which means that the floor can be laid because you don't really want to be laying a floor before you get your pipes done for your radiators because the plumber will normally need to get underneath the floor. So once he's done, we're good to go to lay the floor and then he will come back and put the radiators in. I don't know why I'm telling you all this now. I'll tell you this when I actually get to the house. Um, Dean's miscoated. I think I just said we've got electricity. Yeah, all those like big messy jobs are done. And um, now Dean and I can do the fun stuff like painting, laying the floor, kind of trying to get it to a livable standard so we can actually start moving stuff over there and um, work towards the goal of moving in at some point soon. This has been a lot longer than we anticipated. We had a lot of delays when we came back from Australia. So yeah, the plan has changed and it's kind of just like, we're just taking it week by week based on what we can get done that week. Um, yeah, things have slowed down a lot, um, but these things happen and this is the joy of renovation, isn't it? Um, right, I'm gonna go to work, but not before I show you my outfit.
if I'm wearing this headband, it usually means I just couldn't be bothered to do anything with my hair. Um, you probably cannot see a single thing because of the light. I've got dungarees on today. It's Friday. I want to be comfy. Um, they're from the Margaret Howe MHL. Shirt is also Margaret. I think I'm going to go full Margaret Howe look today, actually. I've got a blazer that I'm going to chuck on over the top of this. The dungarees are like a sort of really um, dark... I wouldn't say grey, I wouldn't say navy, they're definitely blue, they're definitely a blue tone and then the shirt is um, kind of like a really sort of lightweight, thin cotton, also blue and then I'm going to put a blue blazer on as well and I've got my GH Bass loafers on. <laughs> At this point, my ability to balance this camera on virtually anything is a, is a skill. Although it is, this is a bit wobbly, you're on top of a lampshade. Whether you'll stay there is another story. Um, lots going on this week. Lots going on with gallery work because we are opening a new gallery in London. So the gallery I work for has a gallery here in Norwich, uh, one in Islington in London, and we're opening up a new one in Hoxton on Thursday. And in the run-up to that, we've got lots of things going on at the Islington Gallery and then we're pre preparing for the the new opening along with the, the show that's going to be in that opening and so, so yeah there's a lot going on um, so I'm going to be in London for the most of this week um, assisting with all that photographing everything um, so I'll try to take you along with all of the fun that is a busy week uh, working at the gallery um, along with just you know the usual things interspersed in including some outfits. Um, spring has truly sprung and nothing really says spring like a bright green jumper paired with some crisp white cotton trousers. I'm going to show you this outfit because I love this. I think the green with the white, just this as a pairing. I love it. I just love how crisp it is. The knit is from Anne Daughter. It's quite a thick knit um, but I'm not wearing anything underneath it and I just had a trench on today when I went out and was kind of like tepidly warm. Um, really at that nice middle ground where you can wear a piece of knitwear and a trench and you're just like bang on in terms of body temperature. Uh, trousers are from Shane and Moat. These are the boy trousers in the new um, spring summer fabrication. So the great thing about Shane and Moat is like every season they pretty much do the same styles uh, but they just change the fabrication based on the season. So the fabrics are heavier in the winter and lighter in the summer. So these are the uh, the new cotton uh, like lighter weight cotton. So I have them in black from the winter collection and they're a lot heavier and they're a lot more structured. Um, whereas these kind of, I guess, sit between that really heavy structured cotton and a linen. These also come in linen, which I have my eye on. They're so beautiful. Um, so these are kind of like, a, they're, they're a cotton, they're Japanese cotton that holds its structure but still feels, it feels soft. It feels soft to wear, it's very comfortable to wear. I don't feel particularly, you know, restricted to them or anything. Um, double pleat, Pockets. I'm wearing a size zero. Um, quite. Why? Why have I got my flies undone? <laughs> um, size zero. Quite. I'd say quite. Sit quite high on the waist and quite pinched around the waist. Um, I would be interested to see how a one fits, but I think the one because it would sit lower, the kind of balloon shape would look a bit off balance on my height. I'm not sure. Um, so I actually think having them sit higher on the waist looks a bit better proportionally than looser would look, if that makes any sense. Um, the colour is sea salt, by the way, just perfectly described as well, because it's not that like bright blue toned white. It is that slightly sort of like off white uh, that sea salt can be. And then with my Studio Nicholson Moonstar trainers. Yeah, yeah. I'll take some table green. Is that table green? Yeah, I'll have some. 
Okay, this looks like just what I need this morning. Just a hearty bagel filled with salmon. Good morning from day two in London. Yesterday was an absolute disaster vlogging, I do apologise, but went for dinner at a very nice pub um, in East London called The Marksman. The food was just delicious and the, the dessert that I showed you was like a brown butter tart, like it was just incredible. Um, t this morning I'm on photo duty, it's all kind of like systems go to get the galleries ready for tonight's opening. No one's here, hence why I'm quickly doing a little bit of vlogging. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to photograph everything and get all the photos edited so they're sort of like ready to go. Um, fit check, because today's fit is a bit of a funny one. I'm trying to dress for this really sporadic weather of like, one minute it's like 13 degrees and sunny and then the next minute it's like gale force winds and rain. So I feel like the top half of me is very like summery, whereas the bottom half is practical in preparation for any rainy showers. Um, full Shane and look today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get further like far back enough and be able to project my voice at the same time so I'll insert like a, a clip here of the full fit. Um, the top is the, sh the Elsa top from Shane and Moe. It's a cotton viscose blend so it's got really nice texture to it. It's not sheer but it still has like some nice breathability. I have to say I don't usually wear sort of like tops like this. I'm always in sort of like something quite oversized, something quite baggy. Um, really don't wear a deep V very often but I think with the volume of the trousers and like sort of like the delicate nature of this top versus the the big oversized trousers it's quite a nice contrast and then paired with my old Celine um, welly boots this is the practical element of the outfit um, I actually quite like the contrast between the two things um, these are the boy trousers in the black exactly the same as the white ones that I previously showed you however I've actually I'm wearing these in a size two I was wearing the white ones in the zero which do fit, but they are quite snug around the waist. I struggle to kind of tuck anything into them, whereas I feel like the two is a bit more relaxed and I could quite happily get something tucked into these. So just in case you're kind of umming and about sizes, they do come up, I would say, small on the waist, but they are naturally like meant to sit quite high on the waist. Um, I'll do quite far back and try to show you full look. Um, I, li I like this, it's a very, very physical like chic, uh, full black look, um, but very quite ballet inspired with the top and the hair, hence why I sort of felt like it needed a bit of balance with the trousers and the boots. Um, found the boots via Vestia Collective after about, gosh, maybe almost three years of hunting for these. They're really hard to come by because they're, I can't remember what season they're from now, um, back when Phoebe was at the brand. They're kind of very similar to, I guess, to the Bottega puddle boots, but they're sort of like, I guess, the OG version. And they're not quite as chunky, um, which I prefer. They're a bit more like an actual welly boot, uh, whereas the Bottega puddle boots are massive. Sorry, I just feel like this big lorry is for me. Is this a delivery? Potentially. I'm the only one here at the moment, and I'm very conscious that I, I mustn't miss any deliveries in prep. Right, I think I need to go. <laughs> Go on, Dennis. <laughs>
They look like two little pumpkins, especially when they're together. So these are the pendants that I just unwrapped. They're from Four Quarters Home, which is an online vintage shop. I'll leave a link below because um, considering most online vintage shops that I come across are astronomically priced, Four Quarters Home, I would say, are quite like fairly priced in comparison to a lot of what is out there. Um, but these two beauties, I think, will go here. We just need to kind of test see how they look Dean's just cleaning the windows <laughs> um and then I've just unpacked these as well these are from Anne Tradition they I've got way too ahead of myself with these they have no home whatsoever they'll probably end up on like a side table or something like that but I just wanted to unpack them and take some nice photos of them we're now going to measure the windows because we need to get some curtains sorted quite quickly in here we're also going to measure this wall and start designing the bookcase for it um we've got a lot of little jobs to do today we're going to go get some oils um get some gloss and stuff so we can start sorting out all of like things like the door like look how gross the door still is <laughs> cool. and then we do need to do that coving <laughs> still need to do the coving yeah. skirting um, which is what we're buying all the gloss for, because then we can gloss all of the, um, what do you call them, mantle, not mantle, winter sills, yeah. And then, yeah, I feel like those will really start to bring it together. Fireplace is like a, an issue that we're kind of leaving till a bit later, aren't we? We don't really know. We just don't know, we need to find out if we can even have, um, if that's even a working chimney, don't we still, before we make any decisions. Guys, it's 15 degrees. 15 whole degrees outside. I know that is not even that warm in the grand scheme of things, but we are deprived of weather over 10 degrees so much here that when we do get this, it just feels like the best thing in the world. And I am even considering making the reckless decision of leaving the house in just a t-shirt. I think I need to stand in the garden and do a bit of a temp test before I actually make that decision final because um, I might regret it, I might actually get a bit chilly. <laughs> but I need to get out there and enjoy this. It's Saturday and I have some work that I was going to do today in, ready for Monday but I think I'm just going to go out for a couple of hours and at least enjoy some of the sun and then I'll come back and do it because I'll, I'll regret it if I don't go out there. Um, and Dean's out skating so I can go out and just have like a really nice like solo stroll in the sun, a little walk around Norwich, maybe go to some bookshops, get myself some lunch and a coffee, you know, just have like a nice little, just a nice little wholesome few hours. Um, yeah, this, is, this has got me in a good mood. Anyway, I did actually come on here to say something. Um, I just, I've just started trying a new perfume and I guess this kind of segues nicely talking about the change in the seasons and the weather getting back better. Um, because in the winter I wear like quite heavy smoky scents, like everything's quite woody and um, is, is quite jarring when it starts to get warm. Um, Byredo, sorry, the wrong one, Byredo de los Santo is, has been my pretty much go-to during the winter. And I put it on last week and I was a bit like, oh, this feels too heavy now. And I was sent the new Diptyque one. I don't own any Diptyque fragrances. I have had a few candles, but I've never had any of their perfumes. I know um, there's a few like cult ones that people absolutely adore. This one's called Le Papier, and I like this because it has, FYI, I am so bad at kind of like understanding what notes are and and imagining how that is how that would be as a scent so describing a scent to you is going to be at, it's like a lost cause so I apologize in advance but I'm just I'm one of those people that just can't I have to smell it to actually fully obviously you have to smell it to fully understand if you like it but just reading notes kind of just goes way over my head um, but this has some blonde wood in it and then um, a note of mimosa. And the balance of the two is quite interesting because there's that kind of like initial woodiness and then there's like this kind of like fresh kick at the end, which I think makes it a really nice fragrance for this time of year. 
this is that. They describe it as smelling a bit like paper and I, can't, I kind of get it. It has this kind of like library smell to it, which doesn't sound appealing at all, smelling like a library. Um, but I, I rate this, I rate this a lot. I just realised I completely forgot to tag my outfit onto the end of that talk, like I said I would. So let's try to do this on 0.5. Um, headband is from Boots. If you're looking for these kind of like just jersey, cotton, stretchy headbands, check Boots or Superdrug. Also, any sort of like athleisure wear brand tends to do plain black ones. Uh, sunglasses are Ray-Ban Wayfarers. They are the original style. They do like three different variations of the Wayfarer now. If you're looking for this exact shape, these are the original ones. T-shirts from the Row. I will link a lot of green t-shirt alternatives because I've spotted loads recently. Uh, the Row banana bag, Shana Moat, uh, boy trousers. Wow, the sun is shining directly down into my sunglasses. Um, the Row ballet flats, don't know if you can see that. And a tote bag because I anticipate a book purchase or three this afternoon this is literally like dream temperature i am so happy about this